Can you imagine the pain this person went through? Ancient Egyptian skull found riddled with tiny cut marks, and this could be why. And this is a skull over 4,000 years old, showing signs of having been treated for cancer, uh, trepanation, you know, making holes in the skull. The ancient Egyptians were remarkably sophisticated and advanced in the field of medicine, so noted for their skills and knowledge that we are still learning from them thousands of years later. But there were some things that the Egyptians struggled to treat. One of those should come as no surprise, since it still represents a significant challenge even today. That, of course, is cancer, the mutation of living tissue into something malignant and deadly. Nevertheless, we have new evidence that the ancient Egyptians did not take cancer lying down. Two skulls housed, currently housed in the University of Cambridge's Duckworth Collection show evidence of cancer and other injury, the signs of attempts to treat them. This finding is unique evidence of how ancient Egyptian medicine would have tried to deal with or explore cancer more than 4,000 years ago, says paleopathologist Edgar Camaro of the University of Santiago de Compostela in Spain. This is an extraordinary new perspective in our understanding of the history of medicine, he said. The two skulls both show signs of cancer, but each, after careful microscopic and CT scan analysis, tells a very different story. Did they have bone cancer that showed on their skull? My goodness. Skull number 236 belonged to a male individual who lived in ancient Egypt sometime between 2687 and 2345 BC. He died in his early 30s and his skull is riddled with round, around 30 lesions consistent with metastasis carcinoma, although there are no possible diagnoses. So he had carcinoma and it was show, shown on his skull. Most of these lesions are relatively small, but there are some noticeably larger ones, including a coin-sized divot hollowed out as tissue was destroyed by cancerous tissue or neoplasm on the top of the man's head, okay? And uh, a couple of days ago, I did a post a, um, I'm gonna say it here, to glorify God. Uh, a girl, a little girl, a neighbor of my uh, second son, um, 11 years old, had this type of lesion on her head and no doctor wanted to take her as their patient because they knew it was terminal. It You know, this thing is terrible and uh, they, they just put her on antibiotics. She was on antibiotics for a year, and this thing was still growing on her head and into her skull, eating away her, her, her uh, bone. And uh, when my, my son was telling me and his wife was telling me, they were in tears. Uh, so we gave her a piece of the holy myrrh from the uh, miraculous icon of the uh, root of Jesse, Virgin Mary, in the island of Andros. We also gave her holy unction, the holy uh, olive oil that uh, the Christian Orthodox Church does give. You can even have the priest come over to your house and have that. Uh, it's one of the seven sacraments, holy unction. Unlike the Catholic Church, which only, only does it on the deathbed, there's a different prayer for unction on the death, the death, 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 deathbed. I was there for that for my aunt. And there's a different unction for health. Okay? And when the priests do it for health, they do it for either in the church or even at your home. So we gave her the holy myrrh, and three days later she was completely fine, and the doctors call it a miracle. But not only was her body healed immediately, as in the days of Jesus Christ, her character changed as well. She became more bold, more lovable, but also giving love to everybody around her. Whereas before she was like sort of conceited, you know, well, she changed her personality changed as well. So that's to glorify God. Uh, yeah, because there are some uh, uh, Christian Orthodox icons that are, are, are touched by the hand of God, by the Holy Spirit. Now, going back to this, this is some this is what probably she, this is what she probably had. Um, yeah, that's why the doctors didn't want to accept her as a patient. They knew it was terminal. Now, going back to this, 
Uh, the researchers took a closer look at the lesions. They noticed something extraordinary. The edges are scored with cut marks, as though an ancient surgeon had attempted to remove the neoplasm using a metal implement. These cut marks show little or no signs of healing, indicating that they occurred around the time of death. Perhaps forensically, perhaps as, as a last resort, but almost certainly to do with the man's cancer. Now, it seems ancient Egyptian perf the Egyptians performed some kind of sur surgical intervention related to the presence of cancer cells, says orthopedic surgeon Albert Isidoro of the University Hospital Sagrat Kor, proving that ancient Egyptian medicine was also conducted exper uh, conducting experimental treatments or medical explorations of, in relation to cancer. Skull number E270 in the Duckworth collection belonged to a female individual who lived between 663 and 343 BC. She was over 50 when she died and her skull is full of story. What you might notice first is a huge lesion dominating the top of the skull between the right frontal and parental lobes and you could uh, bones and you can see the images of these things in uh, the article link I'll leave below for you in the description box. This lesion is consistent with osteosarcoma or meningioma among other potential diagnoses. Okay, osteosarcoma, the cancer of the, of the bone. But there are other marks on the skull that are healed. Over her left brow is a large injury created by sharp force trauma. Someone, the researchers say, seems to have whacked her head her in the head with a sharp weapon and a little further back on the left side of the top of her head is an injury caused by blunt force trauma. So somebody was being really terrible to her, to, to this poor woman. Now what makes these injuries really interesting is that they're very well healed. We don't know if they were sustained at the same time or separately, but she survived both. Again suggesting that she may have received treatment but the very fact of the wound, so very warlike, is a puzzle on a female victim. Was this female individual involved in any kind of warfare activities, says archaeologist Tatiana Tondini at the University of Tübingen in Germany. If so, we must rethink the role of women in the past and how they took active part in conflicts during antiquity. The huge cancerous lesion on the woman's skull by contrast with the man's skull and her earlier injuries, show no signs of treatment that we can confidently identify. So while the case of death for both patients cannot be clearly established, the advanced state of the cancer in both cases indicates a link to mortality that cannot be ignored. Although the treatment attempt was made by the ancient Egyptians, the cure seems to have remained elusive. We wanted to learn about the role of cancer in the past, how prevalent this disease was in antiquity, and how ancient societies interacted with this pathology, Todinin says. We see that although ancient Egyptians were able to deal with complex cranial fractures, fractures cancer was still a medical knowledge frontier for them, obviously, still is today. This has been published in the Frontiers in Medicine, and it's by Michelle Starr. This is on Science Alert. Please leave your comments and thank you for your support. I really support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below.